My real life science hero is Dr. Nathan Muchala. He studies the ecology and evolution of pollination syndromes. I got to know about him when I was doing a thesis as an undergraduate student. This is like year 2008 and 9. I found his website and I really like his work. I read his papers. He worked a lot with nectar bats and I was falling in love with nectar bats so I really like what he was doing and I've been so lucky that years later in 2014 I got to be his master student and I met my science hero. Jane Lemchenko has been my science hero since undergraduate, my undergraduate years. I read a couple of her papers about snails and mussels on rocky intertidal shores and I was set for this career and knowing that there was this powerful female scientist who even later became more of a science hero when she was the head of NOAA um, and pretty much has been ever since. As a kid, my science hero was definitely Diane Fossey. She was this amazing woman that basically went into the woods and the jungles of Africa and studied gorillas. Um, so she was kind of Jane Goodall's counterpart, but for gorillas, whereas Jane Goodall started uh, studied chimpanzees. So I was just very enamored um, and impressed by this woman who was exploring these unknown territories and studying these amazing, gorgeous creatures. She was also a very strong conservationist, so she was actively working against poaching. I mean, it was just hugely inspiring as a, you know, a young kid who loved animals and wanted to explore the world also. So as a little kid, I never really had a real life science hero because I wasn't really into science. I was super into sports and so most of my heroes were athletes. But then of course, when I went to undergrad and started to study science, I had a lot of incredible mentors like Dr. Peter Bullard that became my real life science heroes. Rachel Carson, um, she is most famous for, she's an author and a naturalist. Um, most famous for writing the book Silent Spring, uh, but the book that I read multiple times growing up, um, I was obsessed with it actually, was called The Sea Around Us and it was about um, the the oceans, the formation of the oceans, life in the oceans, um, and just it's a really beautiful book. You guys should read it. My first real life science hero was the incredible Madame Marie Curie. She was a physicist and a chemist and she has multiple Nobel Prizes. Uh, she pretty much coined the term radioactivity and as a fourth grader learning about this woman it blew my mind and I thought it was just incredible um, to see how far a woman could take her career and in the late 1800s and it really showed that there really aren't any limits to what you can do. Um, and it was one of the first times I had read about a woman in science uh, in my life at the time, and it really made me excited um, for my own future possibilities. I did not become a chemist or a physicist. I became a biologist. As a child, I don't think I really realized, I didn't understand the difference between fictional and non-fictional and real scientists. And I don't think that's to say that I didn't understand that fictional scientists were fake. It's more that I didn't realize that non-fictional scientists were real. So while I read a ton about Jane Goodall and Irene Pepperberg and many other um, female scientists who study animals predominantly, um, I think the first real scientist who really inspired me was my college professor, Dr. Susie Wren, who studied fish. Uh, and I realized that this was something that you could actually do, not just imaginary do. Science heroes. So I don't like the idea of heroes. <laughs> um, to me, it makes it seem like a hero is something, you know, not everyone can be a hero, right? Otherwise, what would be the point of the word? It would be something special. It'd be something extraordinary. Um, and I think for me, thinking of something as a hero kind of puts it out of reach of most people, you know, I th and I think 
especially for scientists, um, I think it's kind of important to see scientists as real people who can do heroic things, um, activities, make discoveries that have a lot of value. But the person themselves is a normal person, you know, with challenges, with struggles, um, with triumphs, you know, all of those things, complexities that make up a human being. I think, you know, bringing scientists to the level, which is like somebody who could be living next door to you, somebody that you see at the grocery store, um, you know, just a normal person who is doing cool work that has a big impact. You know, scientists are real people doing those things. And I think the more that we could see scientists as regular people doing important work, the more we can see, hey, I can be a regular person. Check, already done. Um, but I can also do important work too. So to me, the idea of a science hero is, you know, I think it's, there are scientists who've done amazing work. And I think having an idea of who those people are and recognizing that and being able to take advice and, you know, learn from the experiences of those people, awesome. I love that idea. Um, but as far as, you know, putting people on a pedestal and making scientists heroes, I think that can be challenging because it removes um, scientists from, you know, the realm of reality. And I don't want to do that. I want to see scientists as regular people. You, me, um, a lot of us can be scientists. Mm -hmm.